Hey everybody, it's so good to be back teaching you another math lesson. I've got one here for you about decimals and changing them into percentages. So I'm going to be giving you decimals in this lesson. You're going to be turning those decimals into percentages. And if you look at the main page over here, if you look at this main, uh, um, I guess this title page that I've got for you, it summarizes the whole thing, but I'm going to take you a little bit more into depth. These are kind of the shortcuts. If you can glance at it, I'm going to take you a little bit more into depth, not too much, but just a little bit more than that. But again, like all lessons, we all have our note packages in front of us. If we don't have note packages in front of us, because for, we can't download them for whatever reason, or maybe you're just out of paper in Staples or Office Depot, um, or Walmart is closed at the time and, uh, you know, you're maybe cozied up with a mug of hot chocolate as you watch this and, um, you know, you probably don't want to leave your home cause it's cold if you live in Edmonton. And, uh, so the next best thing is just to find a piece of paper and follow along on that. But again, like all lessons, we've got the background knowledge part. So, uh, check it off as we go along. First thing. I can identify, not me, not Mr. Melham. Yes, I know Mr. Melham can identify, but you, you know, you can identify decimal values. Can you or can you not do it? Give yourself a check mark if you can. Here's an example of what I mean. Decimal two five, we would read it as uh, the two is in the tenths. We've got the five in the hundredth place value. But when we read the entire thing, when we read all of it, we don't say two tenths, we don't say five hundredths, we say 25 and then say the last place value, the hundredths here, 25 hundredths. And this is the fraction equivalent here. You need to be able to go from here down to there in order to understand what I'm about to tell you, otherwise you won't understand the words that come out of my mouth. Now we got this part here, we got I can read decimal values using place values, that's essentially what I just showed you. So put a check mark if you got that. And uh, we also have a key point here is, do you understand that fractions, um, uh, that percentages are essentially fractions that are out of 100 or its equivalent? You may want to write that down in your note package, not just out of 100, but any fraction that's equivalent to a fraction out of 100. Which leads us to the last one is, can you make equivalent fractions? Now let's get started with the main idea here. Recall that a percentage is a fraction that's out of 100. And here's something you may or may not have known, but if I just take the digits in 100, here's 100, and I just swap them around, maybe just mess around uh, a little bit with them, maybe go like this, you get a percent symbol. And that's what a percent symbol is. It's code for 100. When I talk percents, you think fractions out of 100. When I talk fractions out of 100, you think percentages. They go hand in hand. And that's the key to understanding all of this that I'm going to teach you today is understanding that percentages are fractions out of 100. Let's move on to an example. Here's a fraction out of 100. Did you know that that's simply 35 hundredths or 35%? It doesn't get easier than that. When the denominator is 100, you just take the numerator and you write it with a percent symbol. Again, that's what that's code for, 35 out of 100. But here we got uh, decimals now that have two digits after the decimal value have a value of hundredths. So if I show you decimal 25, we already looked at that. That's going to be called 25 hundredths. I can write it out as a fraction out of 100. Because it has two decimal values, one, two, I can just write this number 25 and go 25 out of 100. Now it's beautiful because I can just write 25%. Now here's another idea. What if your decimal is not two digits after the decimal so that it doesn't look like decimal two five where it has like two numbers after the decimal. What if it only goes up to the tenth value? What do we do then? Well, you simply just turn it into an equivalent form that's out of 100 like this. Remember this key idea here. When I show you 100, a fraction out of 100, you think percentages. So our goal is to take any decimal, any decimal at all and turn it into a fraction that's out of 100. That's our goal. So here, this here is not out of 100. This is 2 tenths. This is 2 out of 10, baby. So you know what? We got a problem here. We can't write 2% because percentages are out of 100 and this thing is out of 10. So you know, we have to do a little bit of magic here. We got to turn it into an equivalent fraction. Turn this denominator to 100. How do we do that? Magical, I tell you. 
Look at that, baby. Look at that. It's 20 hundreds. Now it's simple. 20%. You see, 2 out of 10 becomes 20 out of 100, which becomes 20% because anything out of 100 is a percentage is, uh, as a percentage automatically. How about decimal 8? We pronounce it as, oh, what did I do here? I didn't do what I did up here. I used another strategy in that I can add as many zeros after the eight as I possibly humanly could manage and it doesn't change the value. I could have written decimal 80. I could have written decimal 800, 8,000, decimal 80,000, decimal 8 billion. It doesn't change the value. It's all the same thing. So you know what? This format helps me because now I have two numbers after the decimal and anytime you have two numbers after the decimal, you take that number and you write it over 100. And now it's beautiful, it's 80%. Now I'm gonna teach you the easy way. I just taught you the hard way, that's the hard way, believe it or not. Now the easy way is coming up. When you take a decimal and you multiply it by 100, any decimal in the world, multiply it by 100, you turn it into a percentage. That's the shortcut. And when you multiply anything by 100, it essentially takes the decimal value. Imagine my cursor here, this red dot is a decimal. It bounces it two times to the right. And then you know what? You're going to erase after you bounce it two to the right, you're going to erase any unnecessary zeros at the end. Decimal 53, or let's, let's call it like the cool kids call it, which is 53 hundredths. When we take this here, we're going to take the decimal. The shortcut says just bounce it two times and then uh, put a percent symbol and uh, get rid of this zero because we don't need it and uh, get rid of the decimal. It's 53%. How about three hundredths? Read it properly, ladies and gentlemen. Don't say decimal zero three. That's silly. Three hundredths becomes Uno, dos. It's like Dora. It's like you go unos, dos, and then you get the decimal there. And I put your percent symbol. Drop that. Oh, we could drop another zero. That doesn't matter. And drop the decimal. You got three percent. So all those zeros to the left of the decimal, all of them, they don't, they just don't matter. Now this one's a little bit advanced, but you know, let's see if we could do it. Same idea. Two bounces, and uh, put the percent symbol. And then uh, look to the left. We don't want to erase this here. You know, we don't want to get rid of it. Only the zeros that are on the far, far left where there's like no numbers to the left of them. Those are the ones we get rid of. But this one here has a number to the left of it, so we keep it. And what we have here is 107%. You know, this makes absolute 100% sense because if I have 1.07, I've got a hole. And if you eat a whole anything, whole pizza, whole chocolate, whole cake, you ate 100%. So we know that one whole is 100%. And a little bit more on top of that, 7 out of 100, look. For sure you're going to get 107%. Just bounce the decimal off. We don't need it.